Now that you know the details and the different characteristics and properties of a mineral, we're going to start using our tools and resources to identify three different mineral specimens. So for our resources, we have three different levels of resource. It's very similar to if you're just starting to get into cooking, you're not going to go straight to a wood-fired pizza oven and go whole hog on controlling the temperature by hand. You're not going to want to do that. You'd want to do something a lot more simple, like use a microwave or a toaster oven. Our microwave or toaster oven kind of tool is this flow chart that I put up on canvas. This is as the sample ID mineral chart. You're going to be using this for your homework to apply these concepts, so it might be helpful to download or print this chart. You could also just view it in the tab and flip back and forth to help you to answer and identify the 15 minerals that we won't be covering right now. So there will be 15 other minerals that aren't identified during this round of examples, and you'll be doing those for your, for your homework. So this is going to be our simple ID chart. Now if you're getting really into geology, just like if you're getting really into cooking, you're going to want to start getting some more specialized tools. So this next tool is going to be more like if you were to use a regular or traditional stovetop or oven. A bit more dangerous and complex than if you were to use a microwave, but you can do a lot more with it and you can start to get a bit more customized. So our next level of resource or tool is not something that I will be requiring you to use like I will for the flowchart but it is a great resource. Neil Fahey is currently 92, isn't really a famous geologist. This isn't a famous text, but it is the most useful mineral ID text I've ever come upon, and our students who have to use this in class love this the most. It's a lot more useful than the flowchart, but it's more complicated to use, but it's not as unwieldy as something that's really intense. So with a mineral ID book, if you were to go buy Simplified Mineral Identification by Neil Fahey, you would find that you go through the usual steps of finding the color, streak, the H stands for hardness, cleavage, luster, uh, texture is very similar to luster, crystal form, and then you start going into the origins of the name. So the thing I told you about graphite is also listed in this book. The usage where I said graphite's mentioned are uh, used in pencils, that's also mentioned for every single mineral. It'll tell you how useful gypsum is for drywall. It tells you the usage of all the different minerals, it tells you the composition and the mineral family that it's in. It is a fantastic text. And if you were to buy one of these, I would happily walk you through how to use it because this one is a um, it's a real winner for if you're trying to get more into identifying geologic specimen. Now the most unwieldy tool, this is like if you're going to go wood-fired pizza oven and be like checking the temperature manually, like this is going to be like crazy involved. So it's like that one's the microwave, that one's the stove or oven. This is if you're like super duper technical. It's nearly impossible to use for direct mineral identification if you were to find a specimen and try to find it in here. You have hundreds of pages to flip through to find it. But once you do find a specimen, it has gorgeous pictures. It tells you the historical relevance of these things. It mentions all the different aspects that are included in Neil Fahey's book and then some. It has way, way more detail, but definitely far too much detail for what you need for this course. It's a cool book, but it is so technical, it is nearly useless for intro geology. So if we're going to be using our flow chart, I would recommend that you follow along here and re-watch how I access the diff these different steps or assess these different steps. So that way you can walk through the flow chart yourself at home. When I give you the prompts to identify the minerals, I'll tell you what the different characteristics are. You would just go through these simple three or four steps to get to what the different specimen are. So for our flow chart, you will see that it mentions hardness in colloquial or casual terms. This means you don't need any special tools to identify a mineral. So let's say you go out in your backyard 
and you find a rock that appears to be all one mineral and you think it's one of the most common or most abundant, these are the most common minerals here. It doesn't have nearly all the minerals, but there's a good chance that if you have a common silicate or carbonate, it'll be listed on here. So you can use just tools you have at home, like fingernails. You've got fingernails. You probably have a knife or a penny you can use. So you just, this is just basic tools to try to figure out what is this specimen. So we're going to be going through this flow chart to identify three different specimens. I'll be starting with this one here. Gorgeous blue color. This, this color as the third column. Our first column is the streak. So I'll be finding the streak for this first. I've previously used it on this streak plate. It left that blue line there, but I'll show you how to use it again. So step one, finding the streak. Rubbing it on there. See it leaves that lovely blue color. Colored streak. And it says, can be scratched by a pocket knife or penny. So I've got a penny in my hardness kit here. Let's get it out. There's our penny. It's looking a little rough, but you'll see that this is a really soft mineral because it can be scratched by copper, which is a fairly soft metal. So I'm rubbing it along there, and all this blue powder just came off onto the table because this was scratched by the penny. So check, it can be scratched. So we have a colorful streak versus a white or colorless streak. We see that this one can be scratched by a penny, while this other option here called malachite, which is very similar looking to this specimen here, the other one cannot be scratched by a penny, but this one can. So we see it's scratched by a penny. It is deep blue. It doesn't have any special characteristics listed, but we can see it's azurite. And that makes sense because the name sounds a lot like azul, which means blue. So there we have azurite identified simply with this mineral ID flow chart. We could have gone through a series of more complicated steps to identify in the Fahey guide, but you really don't need to. I created a playlist for the geology lab last semester where you can see me applying and utilizing a wider array of geology tools, and I'll upload the link to that playlist if you're interested to see how those are used. So our next specimen that we will be looking at is this one here. There's a hokey little rhyme that I used in a previous video, so maybe you already remember what this one is based off of that rhyme, but let's use the flow chart. So we have these first categories are based on streak. If it has a colored streak or a colorless streak. I'm going to be using the clean side of my streak plate so you can tell whether or not it leaves a streak. Remember, if it's white or colorless, you want to double check by using a black streak plate. So I'll be checking on both. So here we have our white streak plate. Get this blue powder out of here. Our white streak plate, I'm going to use the green portion because that is our primary mineral. Sometimes you'll have a mineral bound up in another specimen. Like here we have turquoise and it's all caught up in these carbonates, but only the blue line here is turquoise. So with this one, I want to focus on the green part and I'm going to try to leave a scratch. And I know, I know already it's a very hard mineral, so that's why I say try. I'm rubbing hard and I don't see anything. So it's a whiter colorless, but let's double check on this black one here to see if we are leaving a white streak or a gray streak. see a little series of white scratches. So we are now leaving a white or colorless streak. But now we have the hardness column where our options are can be scratched by a fingernail, can be scratched by a pocket knife or steel file, or lastly cannot be scratched by a fingernail or steel file. So I am going to grab some steel to show whether or not this can be scratched. Grab that very quickly and we'll test our specimen for hardness. So for safety, I don't think I'd want you sitting around at home with a knife in one hand and a rock in the other and trying to see if it can be scratched and then ending up stabbing yourself in the hand. 
So maybe avoid the knife approach. I'm using stainless steel scissors here to see if it can be scratched. And I'm going to scratch away from me to make sure I don't slip and stab myself. So I'm going to move my hardness kits and my penny here. There we go. Now streak plates are gone. Here we have the specimen. And our first category was if it can be scratched by a fingernail. I don't have much nails to speak of, but let me see if I can't scratch this. No, that actually kind of hurt and I didn't scratch it. So the next one is if it can be scratched by a pocket knife, but not a fingernail. And so it was saying a steel blade, so I'm using a steel scissors. And I am going, and there is no powder being produced, meaning it is not being scratched. So this specimen cannot be scratched by steel or fingernail. So we have this next category here, and the top of it says color. So our options are uh, red, orange, green, brown, or other colors. That is a huge array. Then we also have always clear, always purple, always white, green, yellowish orange, sometimes colorless, and then we have subcategories once we start to narrow it down. So this specimen here has a lot of green to it. We have two different categories. We have one that says red usually, also orange, green, brown, or other colors, typically found as individual crystals in a larger rock. Our other green one says looks grainy or looks smooth. So this one is a little bit confusing. This is why I'm not leaving it as a homework question because it leaves a couple of options for you because it does look a bit grainy, but you could also think of this as being crystals on a larger rock. So it brings us down to wondering if it is garnet or olivine. So this one, I had said in a previous video that olivine is olive green, and that holds true even for this specimen of olivine. So this is also olivine, but you can see the graininess more rather than looking like crystals on a larger rock. Garnets are used in jewelry and are a lot prettier of individual crystals. So this specimen here is an olivine. It is not a garnet. So I wanted to get that one done in the demo of the video so you don't get confused as to whether or not um, a series of hints will tell you if it's olivine or garnet. So our last specimen that we're going to identify is this one here. You may recall this from our original what is a mineral video. We've got this smeared out rectangular shape. It looks glassy, vitreous. It's kind of clear white in color. But let's go through the steps and identify what it is. So remember we start with the first column. We have streak, colored or white colorless streak. Getting back my streak plates and I'm going to try to scratch. I'm seeing a little bit of white powder on here that you probably can't see very well. So I'll test it again on my black streak plate. And you see that's a lot more white that's left behind. So this definitely has a white streak. So we now are looking at our subtopics here of white or colorless streaks. Then we have again the categories of can be scratched by a fingernail, a knife, or cannot be scratched by either. So now I'm going to try to scratch it with my fingernail and we'll see if it can scratch. So I'm moving the plates out of the way, wiping the table so you can see if any powder is produced. Let's go. Let's try to scratch this. And so I don't have very much in terms of fingernails, just these little stumpy guys, and I was still able to produce a powder. I do not have hard fingernails. These things are not healthy, y'all, but I still left a powder. So this can be scratched by a fingernail. So that gives us this upper category here, can be scratched by a fingernail. All of these ones have the characteristic of being colorless to white to gray to brown, all sorts of colors. This definitely fits in that really broad category. The color category, like I said, is not always useful. So this is an example of that. Now with our flow chart, we have all these different special characteristics. Our top listing is that it can be scratched by a fingernail, but we know we can, we just did that. And so that's all that's listed for gypsum. So again, this one can kind of leave you on um, a dichotomous option 
So that's why I'm answering it here, and you can kind of cross it off your list when you're doing the homework and know that we already did this one. So we know it can be scratched by a fingernail. It says, taste salty, let an adult check. Maybe just don't lick rocks. Um, but <laughs> yeah, this one I know will not taste salty because this one is not salt. So I'm not gonna bother licking it. Now we have this other special feature, special characteristic, saying it'll fizz when you drop acid on it. So here I have 10% hydrochloric acid. Now do not try this at home. I am the lab technician and I know what acid feels like. I've got a paper towel on hand to wipe it off right away. But I'm gonna show you how gentle this is because I'm gonna tell you what you can use at home if you wanna put acid on a mineral to see if it'll fizz. So this one, again, don't do it at home. It's gonna be as harsh as if you put like bleach or something on your skin. So that's just the hydrochloric acid. It's not burning my flesh. It will irritate my skin though. It'll get dry and itchy sort of if you, if you got cleaning products like Clorox on your skin at home. So it can be really irritating, but it's not going to kill me like hydrofluoric acid would. There are some very, very dangerous acids out there. So don't mess around with acids generally, but I'm telling you this one is very weak. That matters because another weak acid is commonly found at your homes. So if you have something, um, uh, vinegar in the, in the cupboards, uh, maybe sometimes you could have uh, pool acids at home. I wouldn't recommend using those, but you can put straight distilled vinegar on something and see if it'll have the same acid reaction. So this one here, I'm going to put a drop of acid on it and you'll see how it reacts. And so for this key, it'll tell you if this squashed rectangle fizzes, then it's going to be calcite. So let's check it out. Well, you can see the bubbles. You saw a little bit of vapor pop off of it. And it kind of sounds like when you freshly pour a soda and it has that little bubbly sound that tickles, uh, kind of tickles your nose when you sip it too quickly. So you can see the bubbling happening right there. It's, uh, it's fizzing actively bubbling. So that is called effervescence. So it effervesces when exposed to an acid, and that is a key tool to show you that it's a carbonate, and this one here is calcite. So that's how you use the mineral flowchart. That's how you identify minerals.